Okay, now let's talk about the dislocation characteristics of metals. I'll also talk about ceramics in just a moment. So for metals, we have this you know, cloud of electrons, and all these ion cores are inside of that cloud, packed as tightly as they can. Um, so things like this would be like copper, or aluminum, or iron. Now dislocation motion is relatively easy. Reason? Because metallic bonding is non-directional. Like these two really don't care. Whoop. There you go. These two really don't care. Okay, they're not really seeing each other all that easily because of the electron cloud. Um, so all of these atoms are technically bonded in a way because it's non-directional bonding. They're just, you know, this one's connected to this one, which is this one. I was connected to that one. That one's connected to this one. They're all connected to each other. And so when it moves, it's not really changing anything. It just slightly changes location. Um, also, those close packed things mean it's really easy for this guy. Oh, sorry, I bumped into you. Which will easily push them away. If there is a big gap, like, you know, if I'm trying to push this guy over here, it's going to take a long time to get there. This one, however, fairly easy. So those close packed planes make it easy to slip and give good directions to slip along. Ceramics, though, are covalently bonded. Covalent bonds are strong. Think diamond. Dislocation motion is relatively difficult because covalent bonding is directional. Okay? This atom and this atom are connected. This atom and this one don't even see each other. No idea that they're there. And so if you're going to break this bond, you're really going to have to break it because these two are bonded together. It's not that it's bonded with everything and it's just more strongly bonded to this one that's close to it. No, no. It's, it's only bonded to this one. And covalent bonds are very, very strong. Think diamond. Diamond is extremely strong. It's because of the covalent bonds there. And so it takes a lot of energy to break that, which means it's going to be very difficult to slip. That's why diamonds don't have much plastic deformation before failure. They just break. Okay, now ceramics are ionically bonded. Now, you're like, well, metal, metal bonds are non-directional, and, you know, ionic bonds are really non-directional, because technically this positive ion is connected to all these negative ions. So, why is it difficult? Well, it's difficult because you see how they're all patterned here. It's like a checkerboard. And like charges repel each other. And negative charges repel each other. So when I'm trying to move, I'm actually having, trying to move a negative atom closer to a negative atom. A negative ion closer to a negative iron. And they don't like that. So it's not going to move, which is why salt <laughs> is not very good at deforming. It just cracks. It breaks. It's very brittle. So the more easily you have these slip systems, the more easily you can dislocate without just shattering, um, the more ductile you are. So that's the reason that diamond and salt are not very easy to dislocate and therefore not very easy for them to bend. They just fail and fail very instantly. Though they can take, well, at least diamond can take a whole lot of stress before it does fail. So that's it for this time. Hopefully you realize that those dislocation, um, being easy to dislocate makes a material more ductile. And when it can't dislocate, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a weak material, but it will fail very quickly once it begins undergoing plastic deformation, if it can even withstand plastic deformation at all. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.